Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh dan salam, salam sejahtera. Okay, for today's lecture, uh, we will cover chapter 3 uh, which include about the plastic product design. So, um, in this chapter, we will cover and study about the design element that are common to most plastic parts such as ribs, wall thickness, bosses, gussets and draft. Okay. So, this chapter will cover this general design issue as well as the other that you should consider when designing parts made of thermoplastic resins. Okay, we we'll look at the part design, um, the main factor. Okay, for the first one is the end use, which is uh, the application of the material and the application of the product you design. Okay, you need to consider these factors. What is the application of the product? Right. So, uh, secondly, uh, you need to consider the material properties, and the third one is the manufacturing process. Uh, you want to use whether injection molding, glue molding, um, compression molding, and so on. Okay. Um, in the uh, manufacturing process, for example, uh, before product in a uh, large production scale you want to produce in the large production scale you you need to have the prototype design first so um, so for for the company uh, to make it in the production or large scale production we need to do some tests on the prototype and then only the test for the type is passed we can produce a large scale in the manufacturing uh, process. Okay. Okay, in terms of the end use of the product, for example, if you want to design a living hinge for catch up uh, cap or another design to do bottle ketchup, can so you need to, to choose the material selection. Okay, the material selection is important so that. Uh, the ketchup cap can flexible so many times without breaking so you can choose um, either polypropylene and polyethylene because this poly polymer have a low cost and ease of processing so many other plastics seldom used because of low flexing capability while uh, PP and PE it can flex a million um, cycles before failure so all those plastic are flex up to few thousand times okay now we look at the prime consideration of a part design so based on the end use uh, we need to design the shape whether we want to a simple or complex shape hollow or solid flat or round so for the size of the part you need to consider the size um, and the thin or thick of the part Okay, and the next one is the part features. Okay, part features, uh, there are 11 part features to be considered in uh, designing a thermoplastic uh, part. So we have wall thicknesses, corners, rib, bosses, well line, draft, parting plane, undercut, inserts, inch and snap fit, and trip. So we cover all these elements uh, because these uh, design elements are most commonly used to plastic parts now we look at the wall thickness first okay wall thickness strongly influence many key part characteristics including the mechanical performance and feel cosmetic appearance moldability and the economy so the optimum thickness is often a balance between opposing tendencies such as strength versus a weight uh, reduction or durability versus cost. So uh, give wall thickness careful consideration in design stage to avoid expensive mold modification and molding problem in production. All right. So in a simple flat wall section, each uh, for a flat wall section, uh, if we have a 10% increase in wall thickness, it will provide approximately a 33% increase in stiffness. Increasing the wall thickness also adds to part weight, cycle time and material cost. Material cost. Of course, lah kan? kalau awak increasekan dia punya thickness, dia akan increasekan 
uh, cycle time dan juga costing of the material itself. So, we need to consider uh, by using a geometric features such as by adding a ribs or curve or corrugation okay, to stiff the part. Not necessary. Uh, all the time you need to increase the thickness. Okay, we have another option other than that. So, these features can add sufficient strength. Okay, which have ribs, curve and corrugation with very little increase in weight, cycle time or cost. Okay, uh, we will cover in the next uh, slide lah yang tu eh. So, uh, wall thickness should be uniform and thin. Okay, so we look at the next slide. Okay, what if you cannot have uniform wall thickness due to design limitation? So, so uh, you we can use a gusset. Okay, gusset or support structure that can this can be designed into the part to reduce the possibility of warping. So, what if you cannot have uniform wall due to design limitation? Sometimes uh, we also use a gusset uh, terms in packaging of uh, material, in packaging of plastic material. Macam kertas pembung pembungkus makanan ke kan? Uh, Keropok ke yang kat tepi tu, kita panggil gusset juga. Okay, so the gusset uh, is one of the optional if uh, we we can avoid uh, adding a thickness to the wall by putting a gusset. Alright, because uh, why? Kenapa kita tak boleh nak increasekan wall thickness semata-mata? Sebab increasing the wall thickness, it will reduce the deflection during impact and increase the energy required to, product, to produce failure of the product. So in some cases, when we increase the wall thickness, uh, we... Um, it can stiffen the part to the point that the geometric cannot flex and absorb the impact energy. So the result can be decreased in impact performance. So, uh, for example, uh, polycarbonate, polycarbonate, uh, it will lose impact strength if the thickness exceeds a limit known as the critical thickness. Okay. Okay. Um, other than that, we can also uh, put. Uh, bosses okay, in your design so wall thickness of bosses should be no more than 60% of the main wall thickness and radius at the base should be at least 25% of the main wall thickness should be supported by ribs that connect to adjacent wall or by cassette at the base so um, okay this one is the isolated boss this one is isolated boss, boss with ribs or gusset kidney ribs okay so yang ni lah um, boss eh boss and then yang ni yang dia letak uh, rib boss in corner okay yang ni yang salah lah okay if a boss must be placed near a corner it should be isolated using a rib okay don't get confused okay kalau yang um, yang kat bawah macam ni kita panggil gusset uh, kalau yang uh, macam ni kita panggil uh, rib okay. okay we will look at the next slide okay, wall thickness should be as uniform as possible to eliminate internal stresses part distortion and cracking okay if two different wall thickness is joined blending should be gradual so we can see uh, this is the not recommended uh, because it has um, no tapered design okay so um, if you want to join a uh, two different uh, a wall so you should blend it okay by um, gradual okay gradual design which is tapered or gradual design you know the flow of direction during injection molding is uh, this way okay so the flow uh, awak tak boleh nak ikut flow kan kalau ikut flow nanti material tu dia cepat apa dia cepat break ok the other point to consider when designing wall thickness include the flow length ok the flow length uh, during the injection um, it is the distance from the gate to the last area of the field 
Okay, so flow length must be within the acceptable limits for the plastic resin chosen. Excessively thin wall may develop high molding stresses, cosmetic problem and filling problems that could restrict the processing window. So conversely, overly uh, thick wall can extend cycle time and create baking problem. So other points to consider when addressing wall thickness include avoid design with thin areas surrounded by thick perimeter section, section as they are prone to gas entrapment problem as uh, shown in the figure here. So this figure uh, show the non-uniform wall thickness which can lead to air traps. So um, we should avoid design uh, with thin areas surrounded by thick, thick perimeter. Okay. And the third one is maintain uniform nominal wall thickness. And the last one, avoid wall thickness variation that result in filling from thin to thick section. Okay. For a thin wall, okay, those with main uh, wall that are less than 1.5 mm thick, that will require special high performance molding equipment to achieve the required filling speed and injection pressure. So, uh, part with wall thicknesses greater than 2 mm, we can also consider a thin wall part if their flow length to thickness ratio are too high for conventional molding. Right. Now, we look at the next slide. Okay, for thin wall part, those with main wall that are less than 1.5 mm thick, okay, um, Thin wall molding is generally more suited for size or weight reduction than for costing saving. Usually, low shrinkage materials such as moss, amorphous, or fill resin can tolerate nominal wall thickness variation. So, uh, amorphous material it can tolerate to twenty five percent without significant filling or warpage appearance uh, compared to the crystalline. So. For unfilled crystalline resin, because of high molding shrinkage, it can tolerate half as much thickness variation. So, uh, you need to know the good ataupun a low shrinkage material is an amorphous. Okay? Because a crystalline plastic, it tends to shrink and warp, warp itch more than amorphous due to their high melting temperature. Uh, because uh, crystalline material, crystalline plastic, they do not soften gradually with increasing the temperature, but remain hard until a given quantity of heat has been absorbed and then change rapidly into a low viscosity material. So, if the correct amount of heat not properly applied during processing for crystalline plastic, so the product performance can be drastically reduce and it will increase production cost. Okay. For example, of the crystalline polymer such as polyethylene, PP, nylon, PET, uh, PTFE. Okay. For uh, amorphous, we have ABS, PMMA, PC, polystyrene, PVC. Okay. So when adapting uh, this design to plastic part, we need to consider the following, which are core or redesign thick areas to create a more uniform wall thickness. Okay, for example, we can see uh, this uh, picture. Okay, this one is the core out thick section. Okay, as shown in this uh, right, right picture. So, we make a core or redesign the thick area to create a more uniform wall thickness okay so the second one make the outside radius one wall thickness larger than the inside radius why because we want to maintain the constant wall thickness through the corners so we can see uh, point number two is the explanation for this picture okay we can see that the internal and the external corner ready should originate from the same point all right, uh, because this one, uh, this first figure can see that the corner design is too thin. This one is too thick and 
this one is uh, the same point okay you can see the same point 